In the last video, we covered the definition of a span of a set of vectors. In this video, I want to go over my step-by-step -step foolproof hack on how it doesn't matter what set of vectors you're looking at, you can apply this technique and determine what the span of those vectors has to be. Um, and all it is, is you take the set of vectors, put it into a matrix, and row reduce it, and however many pivots you get in that matrix, that's the dimension of the span. So what does that mean? If you put these three vectors here in a matrix and row reduce it, and say you get two pivots, that means your span is two-dimensional, which means the span would be a plane. If you row reduce and you get three pivots, that means you'll span, your span is three-dimensional, which means you'll span all of our three. And then if you only get one pivot, when you row reduce the matrix where these are the column vectors, then that means the span of these three vectors is a line. Um, so let's do that. So let's put these three, three vectors into a matrix and then we'll see how many pivots we get after row reducing. Okay, I've row reduced all the way down to row echelon form. Remember, you only have to go to row echelon form to determine how many pivots you have. And you can see the pivots, first entry in each row, first non-zero entry in each row. We only have two pivots. And so we can say the span of this set of vectors, these vectors span a plane. Remember, the number of pivots you have is the dimension of the span. So two pivots means two-dimensional span. That means a plane. A plane is two-dimensional. And we say a plane in R what? Well, the vectors that we get that are in the span of these vectors, they're all vectors in R in, that have three components. And so the span is in R3. But the dimension of the span is a plane. It's a two-dimensional span because we only found two pivots when we row reduce the matrix that has the vectors in our set as the columns. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, now we're looking at this set of four vectors, all in R2. And so before we apply this technique, just kind of get a sense of like what kind of answers we might be expecting. So what's the biggest span we could get? Well, they're, they're vectors in R2, so the most we could span is R2. We could span a line in R2, or we could span a single point. But that would only be the case if all these vectors were the zero vectors. So it's most likely we're either going to get a line in R2, or we're going to get the span to be all of R2. So let's apply the technique. We put these vectors as the columns of a matrix, and then we row reduce, and we see how many pivots do we get. So if we end up getting two pivots, then it would span all of R2. If we only get one pivot, it would span a line in R2. So let's see. OK, here's the matrix in, redu in just row echelon form. And we identify how many pivots do we have? Two. So the span is two-dimensional, and that means uh, it's going to span a plane, but a plane in R2, that's just all of R2. So we can say the span of this set of vectors is R2. So these four vectors span all of R2. All right, next example. Okay, so what is the span of these two vectors here in R4? Well, two vectors at most can span a plane, or if they're collinear, they, could, they would span only a line. Um, and that's really easy to check. So technically you, technically, you don't have to use this technique for this problem because you can just see, are these two vectors scalar multiples of each other? And if they are, then they would span a line. And if they aren't, they would span a plane. But I'm going to show you that this technique still works. I'm telling you, this technique is no BS. It works every single time. The number of pivots you get is the dimension of the span. So let's just check. Okay, we've row reduced so that we can identify how many pivots we get. And look, like, like we could have predicted um, by seeing that these are scalar multiples of each other, we only get one pivot, which means the span is a line. It's a one-dimensional span. So we say the span of these two vectors is a line in what dimensional space? Well, these vectors are in R4, so it's a, it's a line in R4. They span a line in R4. Hopefully you're seeing the beauty of this technique. It works every single time. Okay, next example. All right, we have these three vectors in R3. They could span all of R3, they could span a plane in R3, or a line in R3. And so to, de to determine that, we're going to apply our, our technique. We put them in a matrix, and we row reduce, and we see how many pivots do we get. So this row reduction got a little hairy by the end, but we can determine, because we're in row echelon form, that we have these three pivots. And so three pivots means that the span is three-dimensional. So we're going to span a three-dimensional space in R3. That's just, we say, they span all of R3. So these three vectors span R3. Okay, I hope this tip works, or it definitely works, I promise. I hope this tip helps, and uh, I will see you in uh, the next videos. Um, sick.